made this little wire hook out of 18 gauge piano wire to help fish for cables in your fuselage. Like when you're inserting your flap and aileron wires, uh, getting it in to the forward fuselage can be kind of difficult if you don't have a way to fish it out. And then you can just pull it through. I labeled my flaps and aileron wires with different colored tape so it's easy to identify them. I finally received the Orange RX 3-axis stabilization version 2 from Hobby King. I have my ailerons hooked to a Y cable. Then I have my flaps going to aux 1 and aux 2 on my receiver. The remote on-off switch for the Orange RX 3-axis stabilizer is on my gear switch. On my receiver I have the gear channel going to the auxiliary channel on the Orange RX 3-axis stabilizer. I bought a 60 centimeter extension wire for the satellite receiver. One end plugs into my AR8000 and the other end the satellite receiver is velcroed to the tail. This gives you good signal diversity. The receiver is in the front and then the satellite receiver is in the back. The Orange RX 3-axis stabilizer, the servo leads go towards the rear of the model. Then I have my receiver on the side of the fuselage with my antenna pointing forward. Then the telemetry antenna I feed out through the hole in the front so it's not near any antennas or motors or anything like that. And again this little wire hook comes in handy for fishing the uh, telemetry antenna out through the front. Then I just attach it as far back as I can. Then I have a little velcro tie that I wrap around the cables that I can bundle up. Put the battery in there. It's got velcro on the bottom. I put it sideways so if I ever, you know, I might be able to fit two batteries side by side in there. To enable your flaps on your, on a DX8, you have to set your wing up correctly. To do that, you press down the roller button over here, press it down, turn on a power switch, Scroll down to wing type. You see it has various wings like normal with just ailerons, dual ailerons for two servos. Since I have the ailerons on a Y harness, that is considered one servo. And I have both my flaps on two different channels, aux one and aux two. So we're going to go with one aileron, two flaps, and the tail is normal. Select that, hit back, your radio will turn on. Then go into the menu system, scroll down until you see the flap system. And here you can set the percentage of your flap. So when I hit my flap switch, it'll go down 50%. When I hit it to the third position, it'll go down 100% at a speed of one second. I'm going to set the first position to to 40 percent. When I hit the flap switch it would nose up. So when you hit the flap switch it will automatically mix in a little bit of down elevator to keep the model level. I'm going to go 20 percent down elevator at 40% flaps. Then I'm going to go 80% for full flaps. Go about 40% down on my elevator. And to make it nice and smooth, one second works okay, but it does tend to pitch it up and it doesn't really give you time to control it. 
I'm going to go about four seconds. So this is zero flaps. That's the fir first position. You see the elevator just barely move. You see the elevator go down even farther at full flaps. So instead of going in nose up attitude, it'll give it a little down elevator. And at four seconds, it gives you time to adjust your elevator. So if you find yourself diving, you can always correct it with some up elevator. If you're a new pilot, don't put your control rods on the inner holes on your control horn. Put them on the outside so the, the throw is less. You can also dial your throws down on your, if you have a DX8. Here it's 100% throws up and down. You can change the sub trim. Instead of playing with these switches, you can go into your sub trim menu. Dial down your throws so you're not getting such a uh, you know, pitchy model. There's a hundred percent throws up and down. There's seventy percent throws. So starting out, adjust your model to your flying level. The next thing I'll be showing you is how to set up your fail safe on a DX8. Um, the failsafe is if you get a brownout where the spectrum is full or there's interference and your radio and receiver are no longer talking. Um, it can happen in an urban environment where people are using microwaves or using Wi-Fi. Um, with my DX8, if you have the telemetry module, you don't have to put the bind plug into the receiver because a bind plug is taken up by the telemetry module. The bind plug and the telemetry module are the same plug. So the spectrum guys give you a little plug to press this tiny little button here, right here, while you plug your battery in. So it helps to have an extra pair of hands, but it is doable by just yourself. What I do is Hold the telemetry module in one hand and put the uh, little plug poker there. And then you can hook up your battery. And if it's flashing, see how this is flashing? This is flashing. And that's flashing. You're now in bind mode. Before you plug your transmitter in and you press the bind button, ensure your radio is turned off. To set up the failsafe, you need to have your switches in the position that you want your plane to go into or you want your control surfaces to go into when it loses signal from your transmitter. So if I lose signal from my transmitter, one, I want the motor off, duh. If I lose signal, I want my plane to come down as gentle as possible. So I'm gonna go one notch on my flaps. Elevator like one or two notches up and press press the bind button and then turn your transmitter on. It's gonna beep at you because your flaps are in a, a misconfigured position. But don't worry about it you just flip the switch up and then back down to one notch and it'll okay see it'll chirp at you flip it up flip it down there you go let go of everything and you're now bound the transmitter turns on your lights are steady on your all your receivers and your uh, telemetry you can check, make sure you're getting your telemetry, your battery, and your uh, receiver battery, and everything like that. 
Okay, to test it out that your uh, fail safe is working, pretty simple. Just turn off your radio and see if the the control surfaces go to where it's supposed to go. Turn the motor on. Turn off your transmitter. There you go. Your motor turned off. Your flaps went to the first notch and your elevator went up. You can turn it back on. Go all the way down. You can try it again. Watch the elevator. So it goes into a glide configuration and hopefully you can, you know, get your radio back on or get your uh, link reestablished. So hopefully you can uh, recover your plane and it's in a gentle glide. Um, I'll test this configuration out, um, not by turning off my radio, but by uh, going one notch on my flaps, killing the motor and going, and going uh, like two notches up on your transmitter and you can see if it if your model is going to glide correctly and if it doesn't then do the same thing you did before to rebind your receiver and your failsafe settings you know you may have to go three notches up or you may have to go full elevator um, you never know it depends upon the configuration of your model